just generally, you know, neuroscience, I believe, is the study of yourself. The idea that I could do something to change how my inner physiology worked, especially the nervous system, you know, really got me excited. And so just the whole concept that you, what you do on a daily basis in your environment, um, that that can actually change the physical anatomy and structure and functioning. Many hardcore biologists were like, no, that's impossible. You know, that's a cell, it's a tissue. You can't, it's established, especially individuals in development. That's established. How can you change something that's already been developed? Um, you know, so the fact that philosophers and psychologists brought this idea to biology um, is something that, you know, caught my attention. Neuroscientists are now delving into questions like, you know, what is empathy? What is ethical behavior? Can we map out ethical behavior in the brain? Um, can you show brain activity prior to someone actually physically doing something? Meaning, can you predict a person's behavior just by looking at how their brain is firing? And that, of course, can bring up a lot of ethical questions. There's a whole area in pharmacology, cognitive enhancing drugs. Um, people, I'm sure some students know about these. Um, there are drugs out there that people are taking to make themselves smarter. Um, and these have ethical ramifications. If you're taking one of these drugs while you're studying or taking something like the MCAT, for example, does that give you a, an unfair advantage over someone who doesn't have access to these types of cognitive enhancing drugs? So there's, you know, just the advent of neuroscience has um, basically made it essential for neuroscience to think about some of the ethical ramifications of some of their new findings.